Hi, I'm Ed Grevenstedt, and today I'm presenting Hire, a PyTorch meta learning library. I'm not able to be here remotely to answer questions, but my co author Brandon Amos will be here in that capacity. This is also joint work with Dennis Yaritz, Human Hood, Artem Molchanov, Francisca Meyer, Dal Kila, Kang and Sho, and Sumit Chintala. This is all done at Facebook AI Research. So before we delve into meta learning, I just want to unpack the anatomy of a training and an evaluation step. Assuming we're training a parametric model in a supervised setting or self-supervised setting and even some forms of reinforcement learning, while this diagram doesn't purport to cover all forms of training that could take place, it's fairly generic. What I mean by this is when we train a model, typically we have some data from a data distribution that we provide to a model along with the current state of its parameters. With both of these pieces of information, the model will make some predictions which with some other segment of the data, such as labels or the original input, if you're reconstructing it, um, we will compute a loss function, which will yield a loss. But this loss function also allows us to obtain the gradient of the loss with regard to the model parameters. These gradients will then be fed to an optimizer along with the original parameters. And using this information, we can then update them in order to produce a new version of the parameters. When we train a model, a parametric model, we typically go through an iterative process where we do we apply this sort of update several times, and then we, at the end of this, evaluate it, perhaps using some different data, in order to produce a quality measure over the model, such as the validation loss. You can so, sort of see the act of training a model, therefore, as a recurrence with the data as input, and with as a recurrence state the current version of the, hyper, of the parameters of the model. And a large number of meta-learning problems correspond to first there being some meta-parameters. So these meta-parameters could be um, some parametric aspect of this training loop, such as the hyperparameters of the optimizer or the parameters of a learned loss function, data mixture coefficients, or in fact the initialization itself in the case of model agnostic meta-learning. And for this class of meta-learning problems, we want to exploit the fact that the training loop forms a recurrence in order to backpropagate the gradient of the validation loss of our meta-loss with regard to those meta-parameters. So backpropagate through this training loop, which inside it also involves backpropagation. So how would we do this in code? I'm going to talk us through a, a short snippet of uh, toy PyTorch code to show where things go wrong if you try and do this. We want to meta-learn using an arbitrarily complex model that you define somewhere else, and perhaps an arbitrarily complex optimizer which you've defined yourself or are using from the uh, large set of optimizers that your favorite deep learning library offers. And perhaps after defining the model, we also want to preserve a view of it uh, over its initial parameters, for example, if we want to do MAML later. We're then going to define a training loop for this. So we're going to assume we're doing supervised learning here. So we iterate over pairs of inputs and associated labels in our training data. And at the beginning of each loop, we're going to zero the grads that are um, attached to the parameters in our optimizer. We're going to feed the inputs through the model in order to make predictions, and then feed those predictions to a loss function along with the labels, and we'll assume some extra meta variable phi, which we'll assume is a function of, uh, the loss is a function of. And this, again, could just be the learning rate, or it could be some importance weights, or it could be whatever you want. After computing the loss, we um, call loss.backwards to compute the gradients of the loss with regard to our model parameters, and then we take an optimizer step. So this is all pretty standard PyTorch. After we've trained our model sufficiently, um, we want to get some inputs and labels from our validation data and compute the meta loss. Again, we are going to just run the meta inputs through the model and evaluate the loss with regard to the meta labels. And we'll assume here that phi doesn't play a part, that phi is a part of the parameterizes some aspect of the training loop, not the validation loss. So you measure the loss. And now, if we want to take the meta gradients with regard to, for example, the initial parameters, so the meta loss with regard to the initial parameters, you'll observe that in PyTorch, these will be the wrong gradients. Even though it seems like there's a path from the initial parameters through the training loop to the meta gradients, for several reasons which we'll go to in detail in the next few slides, these aren't defined. 
Likewise, if you wanted to take the gradient of the metal loss with regard to our variable phi, because the variable phi is not present in the loss function when you compute the metal loss, there is there is no gradient path um, in the way we've implemented things here that allows you to compute these gradients, even though they mathematically should exist. So let's talk a bit about why we can't do this before talking about how we fix it. If we look at these red arrows here versus the black arrows, technically the gradient, mathematically the gradient with particular assumptions on the class of optimizer and loss function, of course, the gradient of the updated parameters with regard to the input parameters and in fact anything else within this yellow box should be mathematically defined. But for practical purposes and in fact sensible reasons, it's not actually a gradient path that's implemented in practice. Whereas the gradient paths in black are implemented because, for example, you need them in order to compute the uh, local gradient of the loss with regard to the model parameters. Why aren't these implemented in practice? Typically, first, we use stateful implementations of neural network modules um, in TorchNN or in Keras for TensorFlow, meaning that the modules encapsulate the current state of their parameters, and typically these will be written over in place by the optimizer, as we'll discuss next, meaning that there's no explicit tracking of the history of the model parameters as this training step is unrolled over time. So in order to track updates to parameters on the gradient tape or an implicit or explicit backward graph, what's typically needed to be done is to rewrite your model in a functional or stateless style that takes as additional input the current parameters being fed to it in order to track the history of those parameters explicitly in your, in your backward pass. So re-implementing mod, re models in this functional or stateless form works. In fact, that's what most people do when they experiment with things like MAML. But what if you want to meta-learn with like a pre-trained BERT model from some, some external code base that's quite complicated and you don't want to touch it, and on top of that you want to load save model, save, you want to lo load a saved version of your model at the beginning of training uh, in order to meta-learn with it, and you don't want to mess with like match, mapping parameters to like the actual you know, ver functional version, where, which can get quite complicated. In the current way of doing things, this is possible but extremely difficult. It involves a lot of engineering. And every time you change your model, of course, you need to redo that from scratch. The other component of this training step is the optimizer. So optimizers typically apply gradients to the parameters in place using operations that are mathematically differentiable but that aren't actually sort of tracked um, in, in the backward pass. And this is a sensible thing to do to avoid memory issues because you don't want to have to keep the intermediate state of every time step of your model throughout training, and we'll go into like what that actual cost is a bit later. And on top of that, you don't really want to accidentally backpropagate gradients to previous steps of training when you're not doing meta-learning. So it's sensible to do this in place and not track gradients normally. But here, this is precisely what we need to do. So again, the sort of intermediate solution, if you want to do this without our library is to do something like write vanilla stochastic gradient descent in a differentiable way, which is very easy in a few lines of Python or TensorFlow. But that sort of constrains you to use SGD. So again, what if you want to meta-learn using a modern optimizer in your inner loop, or to, for example, reflect the choice of optimizer you're using in your normal outer loop training if you're doing something other than MAML? Let's take a look at our code that reflects what we want to do but can't and see how we can change it to use higher in order to get it to do the right thing with relatively few changes without diverging from, diverging from fairly canonical PyTorch. So let's start with this view on initial parameters. We won't need that, as we'll see later, um, and we simply remove it and import higher at the top of our code. And the next thing we're going to modify lightly is our training loop. Um, so first we're going to wrap it in a context manager which takes a view on our model and our optimizer and produces stateless and differentiable versions that uh, mimic the original behavior and state of our optimizer and model. And then we're just simply going to modify the content of the training loop to use this model and that optimizer in lieu of the original ones. In particular, this removes the need to call zero grad and backward, since we're going to be, this is not, not needed because we're not doing things in place anymore, and this is not needed because it will be incorporated into the differentiable optimizer step. So as I said, we simply replace our call to model with our call to f model here, and change nothing else. We change our method invocation on the optimizer to one over the differentiable optimizer, 
and we have to feed as an additional input the loss so that it can take the gradients. So those are the minimal changes, but under the hood this is sufficient for us to then, in our final bit of code, modify the computation of the meta loss by calling the f model instead of the model. And now we can successfully take gradients of the meta loss with regard to the initial parameters, for example, by using this convenience function fmodel.parameters, which allows you to take it with regard to a particular time step in your unrolled loop. Or we can simply take that the gradient of that meta loss with regard to phi, and again here, that will automatically be the correct gradient with these, min with these minor changes. So how does this work? Under the hood, we're going to be monkey patching the torch module for the model that you're using in order to be able to implicitly track the history of the weights over time, over the unrolled training loop, so that they can be updated with differentiable operations in the optimizer rather than in place. If you're unfamiliar with this notion, monkey patching means that we're going to be at runtime creating a copy of our Python object and modifying its behavior to functionally replicate the original module based on the original module state, but with slightly different behavior when it comes to actually tracking the updates to the model. We also provide differentiable versions of optimizers that wrap the regular optimizers and branch off their states. And these perform updates on the implicit weights of the patched modules in a way that yields graphed functions. So that tracks the entire history of those parameter updates on an implicit backward graph. This means that we can do things like I showed in the earlier code example, or to give a more sort of like popular kind of algorithm example, we can implement mammal training in 15 lines of Python, not counting the lines where we define our optimizers and models, but crucially, we don't have to count those because you can use, you can swap the model, you can use something completely different, or you can use different optimizers here without having to rewrite anything from scratch. And as you can see here, the actual implementation of model agnostic meta learning here uses entirely canonical PyTorch, save the parts in bold, which is where we define the context manager and where we compute the loss step. So what's supported by this library? It supports any model that subclasses torch.nn module, that's including third-party code bases, anything that branches off from this, even outside of the sort of core PyTorch code base. That means nested modules, modules with shared weights, state, so it supports batch norm, pre-trained weights, existing save modules, doesn't matter if they were trained without knowledge of the existence of this library or by someone else, you can use this out of the box. And we support every optimizer in Torchout Optum except Sparse Atom and LDFGS. And as a warning, there are some possible grad stability issues or correctness issues for AdaGrad and RMS prop that are being fixed. And crucially, this allows us to do out-of-the-box meta-learning on GPUs. There's no reason you can't do that. It's basically using PyTorch's auto-diff engine under the hood. So even though we're doing something fancy with regards to the monkey patching, it runs as fast as if you wrote a manual version of the model yourself, and you can use all the PyTorch machinery for GPU computation. So what's the catch? Well, inherent to this entire class of meta-learning algorithms, there's a space complexity attached with unrolling your training loop, which is ON for n steps unrolled. You can get around this with things like gradient checkpointing, which is not supported out of the box for this library due to how it's implemented in core PyTorch, but a manual implementation of gradient checkpointing could be done. There are thorough unit tests for the library, but there's no blanket correctness guarantees for complex or exotic model architectures in that we develop this primarily reactively. If someone notices there's a significant problem, then we can investigate, but we can't guarantee up front that this will always work for everything. We're just fairly confident it will. There are possible gradient stability issues for differentiable optimizers as the number of unrolled steps increases, and this is somewhat inherent with this class of meta-learning approaches. We have some mitigating strategies that are implemented for Atom and SGD, but for other optimizers it's still experimental and, like anything, not perfect. Obviously, it's beta software with a fairly small development team, so other bugs and memory issues may still arise, and we're reliant upon the community for flagging them so that they can be fixed. So you can use it now. It's pip installable because it's on PyPy. So just pip install higher and in your code import higher and start meta learning with very little overhead. If you want to learn more, you can look at the actual implementation of it on GitHub and we have some docs in their fairly basic state um, on read the docs which are going to be expanded upon in the coming months as time permits.
So thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, I'm sure Brandon will be happy to take them.